All right, folks. So uh, we're playing some hyper random here, not to be confused with mega random. This is something different. And players started with two TCs in a castle, and that's pretty ridiculous. Like we've got Orange's TC touching the castle. I've never seen that before. The players are scattered all around. This is a community game with kings, so it's diplomacy, and players will ally each other hopefully at some point and. If a king dies, there will be an explosion. So let's hope that orange doesn't run directly into green's castle. Because if that were to happen, green would probably die as well. Really interesting map. There's lots of cliffs. For some reason, all over here, it's it's not a very like balanced map in terms of how resources are distributed. I'm down for that, though. I'm 100% down for that green. I thought that was the king. Guys, ally each other, please. This is how the world works. You start off as enemies. You don't necessarily know anyone. You get to know them. You become friends. And then maybe you get in a legend video. I don't know. Okay, so let's introduce our players. Now, multiple players in this game said ahead of time on how I should pronounce their names. I have already forgotten what they have suggested. All right? So that's just where we're at. Um, in the orange, we have Debris. That's what I say. Okay? Debris playing as the Slavs. In the green, we have Gondir playing as the Mayans. Way over here... In the gray, we have Strangler Trees. Not to be confused with Straggler Trees. It's Strangler Trees. Playing as the Huns. And first community game for Strangler Trees. It says, wait, where's that ally thing? And as a race, says, reminder from T90, Kings Explode, Wonder, and Relic Victory enabled. Okay, what was supposed to happen is my host was supposed to pass that information along. We're like five minutes behind. But I told the host to, to pass that information along. But the host had already started the game. Host was ready to go. Must have somewhere to be. In the blue, then, we have uh, Azare playing as the Burmese. Uh, in the teal, up against the, the right side of the map, we have the Clay playing as the Turks. In the red, we've got Nocturne Soul playing as the Japanese. In the purple, then, we've got uh, Nephthys playing as the Bulgarians. And then, last but not least, in the yellow, we have Dracon, who is uh, going to potentially lose this villager to the boar, but is playing as the Spanish. So double TC start, it's going to make it difficult for these guys to, to really balance things out. And it does seem like wood is kind of hard to come by. Yeah, but the other aspect of Mega Random, which is really fun, is the amount you get on each resource is different. So that boar had 600 food. This sheep has 79 food. Um, the deer here, 152 food each. Gold tile, 653. What about this gold tile? That's 424. What about the berries? That's 400 per bush. That's not bad. So, so at stone, 108, you just look everywhere and you've got to think a little bit more on how you're going to, you know, balance your eco. Um, yeah, and wood does seem very difficult to come by. Uh, gold and stone obviously spread out throughout the map. And it seems like the, the gold outside is probably around 1300 per tile. Yeah, so there's, there's levels of consistency. The gold that's far away from where the players start has 1300 a tile. The boars are somewhat normal. So yeah, um, I, I like Me I like Mega Random, I was just saying, but um, I've always felt, and it was recently confirmed with a video that was created by Zetnus, the creator of Hyper Random, that Mega Random is way less random than it ever has been. The original version of Mega Random I remember from back in the day apparently had like 190 possible gens. The DE version has like 49. And I don't know, it just got a little repetitive, yes. you know? And yes. so I wanted to go for something different. And, you know, this might not be balanced in some cases, but it does seem like they, they all have encountered similar situations at the start. Okay, look at the technique here from Orange. Orange says, hey, only to you. Want to be friends? <laughs> Orange says this to everybody. And then Yellow's like, sure. Oh, look, I've got a friend. Purple's like, hey, yeah, I'll be friends with you. Yellow says, friends for life. Green says, hey, Orange, I'd love to. Teal says, sure, why not? Blue says, sure, why not? Oh, my God. Grace says, absolutely. This is the technique I've been talking about for a long time. And that is the most obvious example of how easy it is. Everyone is now friends with Orange and now thinks that Orange is friends with only them. Now, you got to be clear on how to do it, okay? If you use the little asterisk and... and you know, say that, it'll say all in front of your message. So you don't do that, okay? You go up to the window and just toggle on everyone for your chat and then send the message normally. 
Now, Capture Age doesn't have a way of showing that, so it'll always have the asterisk there just to indicate it goes to everyone. But, you know, now Debris going to talk at least to Green. I mean, Green's close by. And honestly, that was the main thing I, I wanted to, to talk about, right? Because they have started so close to someone, they've kind of started in pairs. It would make sense that players would be friends in their little, you know, pairings. It might be like, you know, some of those things in school where you get paired up with someone, you don't really choose them, and maybe they don't do... Maybe they're not smart. Maybe they smell. Maybe they're just not someone you want to work with. Maybe you're gray, and you really wanted to do your book report with Nocturne Soul, but Nocturne Soul's over here now, and Nocturne Soul's starting to be friends with Teal, and then all of a sudden, you're never friends with Nocturne Soul ever again. You go through middle school and high school, and then you never talk to the guy, and you thought you were going to be best friends. Not speaking from experience at all. But, um... You know, I, I don't know what the situation is, but I would imagine that it would make sense for these players to be at least very cordial to the players they're next to. And that's kind of rare for community games because normally you have players will be friends with the players on their flanks, but here there's only one. There's not two. So, uh, we'll see. Hi, Yellow says purple, and then there's nothing else. Yellow does say high purple. Players have been very chatty. Blue says most inefficient hunting you've ever saw. Good stuff. I'm not looking at your base. It's all good. And yeah, you're actually not kidding. <laughs> That's pretty inefficient. Hmm. Okay, so I will see how things flow. Everyone's been fairly chatty, and everyone allied everyone at the start here. So, so far, it's been pretty good with diplomacy. Okay, Red says, only to you, Teen ID. Hope this time you named me this time on the game. Last time you skipped me, frowny face. Don't have to leave soon this time, though. 11. Well, apparently I didn't introduce Red last time Red was in a community game. But Red, I already did it. I apologize. Um. Also, was Red the player in the Penguin Nothing game that had somewhere to be and just sacrificed themselves against the others? Strangler Trees, which is my favorite name in the game. I feel like I want to be a Strangler Tree for Halloween. It's not a great start for me, but not horrible either. And I think I have the chat settings right. Though we'll see that if we see the cast. Yes, you're doing good so far, Gray. So, you know, of the players that I know have played before, we have Nephthys, who's played before. We have Debris, and then we have Azerite. Those three I recognize more than any of the others. The others, I'm a little unsure on their experience level. But overall, I mean, I guess it's been Red who's been struggling the most with creating Vils. But everyone's done a pretty good job with the 2TC start, in my opinion. Strangle this <laughs> kinky. No, it's not kinky. It's a costume idea. Civ-wise, I'm in love with the Huns, right? So I want to see some Tarkins. Uh, some Cab Archers, perhaps. Bulgarians can have a really good late game, and community games usually go late game, so that could be good for purple. Mm. Burmese honestly could be quite strong in late game as well. We could see that be good from blue. I love the Turks late game as well. I think the weakest late game civilization here, hate to say it, is probably Japanese. There's just a certain point where they drop off, but you could maybe go like Cav Archers and Samurai... Maybe some, some trebuchets. It's also quite convenient that your castle started up against the edge of the map here, Red. You just got to be careful. Like, if you fall going down these stairs, and then you you somehow slide through there, I guess the king's too fat. He would get stuck. But you don't want to fall off the edge of the earth. That would be pretty pretty pr pretty disappointing way to go. Sorry. Green, gray, teal. Do we team up and trade? Question mark. So, think of the directions we're talking about. So, I know my cursor's tiny on screen, but... Blue says green, gray, and teal. So, they're going to try and maybe use the north and then the east to trade. And we actually see villagers from blue headed to the corner. So, that's the idea. And red's asking teal for friendship right now. I haven't seen much from clay yet. So I do feel like, you know, the bottom two players are actually teamed yes. together here, or at least have started together based on their starts. 
But red definitely seems to be struggling a little bit more, at least economically. So we'll see how things go. Hello, Sully. Nice to see you. Holy walls from Debris. Man, this is this is an experienced community gamer, right? Started talking to people really early. Has everyone feeling real cutesy about them? And now we've got the walls going up. Thinking about the trade already. Oh, yeah, this is going late game. It's interesting, though, that I think Orange wishes to trade to the north. And that is where Blue wants to trade. And Blue did not invite Orange to the party. So seeing as that is the situation there, I'm curious to see how things will go. We do have Nephthys on the way to Imp already. And will arrive to the Imperial Age before we have the clay even in the Castle Age. Guys, community games are high stress stuff for people already. Because they just, they, they've watched so many games, they want to play a role. They come into this thinking, I have all these ideas for being a diplomacy player. And then they realize that playing the game and chatting at the same time is tough. Then you get a double TC start with this weird map gen. And I imagine it doesn't help things. And wood is probably going to be an issue for people. Well, honestly, there's probably tons of wood. It's just all awkward to take. That's 90,000 wood, but that's only one type of tree. And the other type of tree is, is 58,000. I can't even tell what I'm clicking here. Anyways, there's there's still tons of wood on the map. It does feel like it is less, though, than a normal game. You also have to remember that some of the trees are going to have different amounts of wood, but most of them that I click do have 100. Uh, T90, do you ever let players choose their sieve? Usually, no. Um, just from experience. Like, when I used to let people choose sieve, it was like Spanish, Mongols, Celts. Every game. Those were a given. Koreans. <laughs> Blue snags the relic. If you want to wall in a relic like that, you do need to wall the whole way around. And Blue says, I'll place it in your monastery. Okay. Oh, Gray. Gray actually says, stealing a noob's relic, Blue. I don't know who Blue's speaking to, but Blue says, I'll place it in your monastery. And I guess that is to Gray. Um... Thanks for casting Duvenized Cup game. Always a treat to get your advice on gameplay. Never would have considered Skirm slash Arb against Britons. And at the cost of a few wisecracks, I'll take it every time. Cheers. Yo, Sully, it was a good game, man. I mean, Blue, not only did you just pick up the relic, but now you're not moving with the monk, right? Like, at least get out of here. How many relics are on this map? I'm going to just say 12. I'm not counting at this point. There is so much going on. I just want to clarify, Purple probably knows Sully's watching because they are friends. But uh, Red says, I'm scared. I'm not a pro. And Purple now says, none of us are pros like Sully for sure. I mean, Sully's, he's here. I don't want to be too positive about the guy. But by community game standards, he's, he's definitely one of the best these days. But I mean, pro might be taken a little bit too far. Question for Sully, by the way. So, do you remember the game, the I officially hate you now game, where there was Skirm Slayer? Who is that again? That wasn't Zolotl, right? And Zolotl is also known as Nephthys, so there's a lot of confusion. I don't know why people have multiple names. It trick, it tilts me so much. Just have one. Um. But yeah, I think that might have been like Emu or someone. So was from the community. Oh, it was Jewel? Okay, all right. You see the problem though, right? See, I don't know who it is. I just know it's someone in the crew. He's like a little brother to me. Got it. All right. It was Jewel. Thank you. Thank you. Because I uh, I was curious about that. I was thinking about that game the other day because that game is one of the best ones we've had in recent memory. Okay. Three players have crossed 100 villagers. And it's the same three we talked about before. We've got blue. We've got purple. We've got green. Wait. Why did I say green? Orange. Same deal. Uh, other players aren't too far behind. You do still have red and teal struggling compared to the others, but by no means in horrible positions. The eco still go really strong. This is a classic mistake with two TC starts. I remember doing this so many times. See, teal thinks I've clicked up the castleage. I can't make bills because I'm on the way to castleage, so why queue up bills? But there's a second TC. 
Oh, and it... Okay, well, now Teal is producing villagers. So I caught Teal at, a wrong, at the wrong time. And Teal has just now figured out how to talk to one person and has decided to speak directly to Debris. Blue says, does anyone have biscuits? There is no bring me biscuits in this game. Another community game player. So I don't know what biscuits would actually do, but maybe someone got hungry for biscuits when I played the song. I feel like this statement here is going to be really important to this game. Yellow saying, so I waited four years to get into a Kami game for the first time. What about you guys? Ooh, purple says, I've waited six months for T90 to pronounce my name correctly. Okay. All right. Just stop. And Gray says, been waiting since Hidden Cup 3. Not sure when that was. Green says, third time. Long time since the last one. Red, I think it played in one other game, but had to go somewhere and just basically went all in because of it. But they're sharing their experience level. But guys, Yellow waited four years to get into a community game. And Yellow is in the middle of the map, is walled out from trading to the corner, has not been involved in any of these planning conversations for the long run. Blue didn't even talk to Yellow when talking about trade. Blue talked to Gray, to Green, and to Teal. And then again, if Yellow is going to indeed be friends with Purple, things should be pretty good. And wow. Okay, so... Nephthys here is ready to go to town here with the Conics. Like I said, late game with Bulgarians is really strong. Also, I, I should have turned it off earlier. I'm sorry. But we're going to turn off the market events. Because that's just... There's been one too many pop-ups on our screen. So I'll switch to the military tab. That'll give us an idea of players are getting ready to attack. And, you know, it's been a pretty peaceful build-up. But we've arrived to the point of the game where players could attack a whole lot faster. Now, why did I double-click those conics and only those conics got selected? What? Oh, you know what it is? I bet you Capture Age sees the ones created out of a crepost differently from the ones created out of a castle. Okay, so these are castle conics. Yep, those are castle conics. And then the, where's a crepost conic? Crepost conic, ready? It's not going to select these top ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Woo! I might have gotten horrible grades in school, but look at me coming to conclusions. My teachers would be so proud. Well, conic's a hard unit to stop. Um... I think a unit that would maybe be really good against it would be like a mobile ranged unit, like a cav archer style. Um, but you know the the tricky thing is too is they're really pesky to to push away, and then you combine that with you know purple making so many crepos, it's going to be hard to do any damage to purple here. But yeah, the, you know, when the conic dies, the rider gets up and fights again, and that in and of itself isn't that strong. But it's just having more units in that area consistently. Okay, so top score player. Teamed with yellow, teamed with orange. That seems to be the trio right now. Do you need any res to help with things, says purple. <laughs> Blue. What is that? Blue says to orange. <laughs> What a weird statement. Hey, Orange, I'm in an alliance with three other players. I can't guarantee your safety. But you can hide in my central base if you need to. And Orange is like, what? Who are you in an alliance with? Blue says, as long as you don't blow me up, I'm teamed with gray, green, and teal. Orange says, if you attack me, I will blow you up, lol. Okay, that's fine. If they are coming for me, let me know. And I won't blow you up. Hey, uh, friend, sorry, you're not really part of our team. I can't protect you. What a weird thing to say, but I guess Blue is trying to be nice about it. And now Orange is gonna... <laughs> Orange says, hey, purple, yellow, and red. Blue just told me him, gray, green, and teal are in an alliance, and they might come this way. What were you doing, Blue? You just compromised your whole team's ability... To gang up on and surprise the enemy. Red's like, count me in. 
And then purple says, thanks. Blue is to watch out for. And yellow now says, that is concerning. Let's get ready. What was that, Azure? What was that? What are you doing? Now, here's the funny thing. The two weakest players are apparently separated from each other, right? Nocturne Soul is with the with the warm colors, so with yellow, purple, and orange. And then Teal has been looped into Blue's team. And I don't think that they really understand currently that that would mean that they will need to go to war, but there is going to be war, and they may have to choose sides. I don't think these guys are really in that thought process yet. So I guess, like, I think what Blue was trying to do there was like, hey, we can be teammates, but I can't really actively fight with you because of my alliance and my trade with other people. But I think there's ways to say that a bit differently. Grace is Blue. Who do you want me to hit? Who do we prep for? And Blue says Purple has a lot of army. Purple is moving. Is Purple going to kill Yellow right now? I mean, purple could have already killed yellow. Purple's probably just going to move versus blue. We'll move on blue. Okay, here's the deal. I'm not seeing blue with any army right now. Maybe blue is prepared. Gray's got Tarkins and Knights. Gray has is, is asked blue, what can I help with and what's coming? So gray strangler tree is just going to be at blue service here, but blue has brought this on the team, and isn't even going to be prepared to fight. Hey green, what's up? You see my message now. Remember, green's apparently on the other team, according to what has been discussed, and orange might wish to have a buddy on the other side. And now orange says, "Is it true?" Green's going to be like, "What are you even talking about?" <laughs> is it true? Will you betray me? Green is like, what? And Green says, I have a trade alliance with them. Green's quickly trying to explain. You better type faster. Uh. Anyways. We'll see how things go. But no war thing till now. All right. Yo, Perp, I could back you up if you want to attack blue. Okay, so yeah, th this just more and more reasons for purple, yellow, and orange to be together. That's what I'm seeing. Might shore up military power against blue, but I won't attack you unless you attack me, says orange towards green. Okay. And green says, hope we can help each other when things go wild. This is interesting. I find this conversation between these two very interesting. I also find the spelling for orange on all these words very interesting. That is Druz Druzina. Druzina is way better than Druzina. Okay, so blue declares war on purple. The king for blue is in this castle, which blue was wise to do. Gray is here with the elite Tarkins. The Tarkins are here to defend. We've got elite Arambai, we've got Halbs, we've got Tarkins. The Conics, they thump. Guess what? Parkins used to thump. They used to make a noise. They don't make noise anymore. The definitive edition is a no thump edition for my precious Tarkins. Still holding out hope that someday, because of my constant complaints, that they will get a thump again. But I probably should just give up on that. That was very well defended from Gray and from Blue, and great teamwork from the two of them. And Purple says, hey, I'm at war with Blue and Gray. So I imagine orange is going to show up. It wasn't very well coordinated. Like, purple didn't wait for orange to show up and help. Um, well, I'm still very curious to see what happens between red and teal. They've shown no malice towards each other. They both might even need each other. It might be kind of like an underdog story. They're both in separate worlds, separate trade, and they will need each other eventually. And the Tarkins, very good unit against archers, very good unit against buildings. This is a very tanky unit. And, uh, well, there's a whole lot of them right now. There's 69 army for Strangler Trees. Hope they don't call me out too far, says Green. And Orange says me too. Okay, so they definitely have a situation where they, they're thinking about possibly being together in the future. 
and they don't want to have to fight against each other, but they do have to fight for their team, which in kind of means fighting against each other's causes. I've actually never seen Conic versus Tarkin. Never seen the fight. I figured Tonic, uh, the Conics would destroy, and yeah, the Conics are destroying. There's a numbers advantage for the Tarkins, and there's help, though. Yellow now turns. The yellow's here with Conquistadors and Hussars. Oh my goodness. And Orange says, hey, Blue, I hate to do this. Yeah, it's very possible I missed some conversation between Orange and Blue at the start, which is why Blue had reached out. Maybe that was already obvious to all of you. But, uh, you know, the war has begun. We have yellow, we have orange, and we have purple fighting against blue and gray, and eventually green. I'm not sure green is actually going to show up with anything. I think green's going to be needed, or teal's going to be needed, or red's going to be needed. These guys are just doing their thing, kind of chilling at the moment. Even army comp-wise, Conics, Conquistadors, Boyars, you just don't stop that. I think the Burmese would have to have elephants. The Huns would maybe need to have Paladin. Um, I mean, Grey could do that. It's similar cost. Tarkin's not... I mean, Tarkin, unfortunately, is just a little bit worse than a Paladin in terms in these types of fights. Mm, lots of castles going up for the players who might feel like they're going to be targets later on. I'm curious to see how things go between Purple and Orange in the long run in this game. Because to me, it feels like they're going to be far too strong and... They'll be bordering each other. I'm not seeing it from Blue here. Blue warned the enemy, hey, we have an alliance against you. And here we are, and everyone is prepared, and everyone is on board with a plan to kill Blue. <laughs> this is not going to go in the top 10 of best Diplo chats ever. <laughs> this, is, this is a bit rough. And if this sending some Hussars into the eco, could maybe find some kills in trade, find some kills on farms. And I am noticing Teal's up to 66 army. Ooh, Teal's got cab archers with full upgrades with the, with the Turks, 100 HP. That could be very helpful. But this has honestly reached a point where I feel like if you help Blue in Teal's position, you are just going to be targeted next. Red... Now turns on blue. Oh, wait. No, we expected that. Sorry. And actually, Debris allies blue. Why is this? Mm, blue says, of course, I'm top score when I killed so many units. And then orange just kind of feels a little bad and is going to pull back now. Interesting development here. So, we've seen this many times before. Orange just has to make sure that this is not obvious to the team that is still working hard against Blue. I don't see the long gain of keeping Blue in the game. I think killing Blue would be helpful. But Orange is really trying to be friends with everyone. That was the strat at the start. And trying to orchestrate where we're going next. Orange says, are we going gray next? And Orange says, yeah, seems green is not fighting. And purple says gray joined the wrong gang. God, it, I love. It's so funny to me how all the blues teammates do not know that blue basically told the enemy, "Hey, we're against you guys." Like, <laughs> this is all happening, and they probably are like, "Man, what could I have done differently?" <laughs> uh. Teal is baby. We be nice for now. Says purple. Okay. Green says, any plan on how to go when blue and others are gone? This is asking orange, right? And that that is going to be a predicament for green. Because I feel like they're going to... Blue's rattled. Gray is going to be next. Gray's king is actually on the move and not moving the right way. Gray, where are you going right now? And orange says... To gray, I'm declaring war heads up. Gray says, thanks for letting me know. Me dead. Uh, I guess Gray did lose a lot here. And yeah, Gray's trying to run the king to the enemy. And Gray's going to be the first person to die. Strangler Trees gets a warm welcome to community games. And will be the first person to die. Never really expanded the eco into a different area. 
And this never really passed Blue's walls here, and there will be an explosion here in a second. And that's the first one down. Say goodbye to your Boyars, Orange. Hope you enjoyed them. Big explosion there. Blue is on the move, but is not going to be receiving any help from Green, apparently, and is probably not going to receive much help from Teal. They do not feel like there's any value in them sticking their heads into this business. Green says maybe kill Yellow King quick. And just waiting around. Uh, Red is confused what happened. But Red is here attacking Blue and Red of course just joining the team. Okay, so players still trying to figure out what happens next. I'd be shocked if... Uh, Orange were to go for yellow right now. It seems far too risky, and Dracon's like, man, it took me four years to get into community games. Who cares if T90 calls me a tryhard and complains about Bombard Towers later on? I'm gonna make some Bombard Towers. There's the Bombard Towers. Now, Orange did give Teal a heads up that army's gonna be on the way, and Teal just kind of sits behind the walls for the most part. I mean, is even trading through the battle over here, and, and Teal's just like, oh, okay, I'll just wait. What is the plan here? This is what I think. There is no reason for the warm color team to not kill Teal. There's no reason for them not to just continue to kill Blue, and then eventually they're going to go kill Green. So Green needs to get a move with Orange in over the next, you know, before those other players happen. This stage of the game. I'll check quickly to see the stockpiles of resources, which is important. Blue is 21k resources. Aren't just 15k. Sorry, that's not just resources. That is gold. And Blue's struggling for food. And Blue's struggling for help. There's just no team right now. It is simply just Blue. And that is an issue. To see if Blue can survive. It feels like it's so easy for them to find spots. Blue has gone for the, a long wall to the edge of the map. That is not something you see every day. But the Arambai are getting destroyed by the Conquistadors. The Conquistadors can stroll right into the trade. And Yellow, I guess, had clicked the Paladins through at one point before the wall completed. So the Paladins a little confused, but Yellow's still making progress. And maybe Yellow will, you know, threaten other people with this type of score just from all the kills. Blue says, guys, I need your help. Start attacking someone. Hmm. And it feels like they don't gain anything at this point from actually helping you. They just have a bunch of enemies that are going to kill them next. Now, there is some honor involved, so I imagine maybe that will, th that is something that's important to say, and maybe Teal will make a move, but right now, Teal's just playing defense. You can tell Teal is little overwhelmed by the circumstances and maybe a bit on the newer side because we haven't seen caravan research in the market for the faster trade. I think red... Red may choose to, to defend here. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Okay, green says I'll try to snipe yellow. Big moment coming up if that's going to happen. We've not seen green move out at all and there's the plumes, there's the treps. Yellow will be very focused on this push. It's very satisfying to watch this, I'm sure. Clearing up units constantly. Orange says I'm going in. Orange is talking about against Teal. Which isn't going to kill Teal. Teal will be able to hold against this. The Siege Rams are strong, but not everything. The Siege Rams will eventually be dealt with, especially if Teal makes something else. And yeah, Teal's going to make some Knights against the Rams. Green will have a big old blob of units going in. No one really objected to the statement from Green. I'm going to kill Yellow. And that was the statement to Blue and to Teal, which I didn't realize. I'm glad I checked. Green now says in the mirror to themselves here, I go for Yellow now. The guys are calling me out. And Orange is now asking for help. Well, the problem, Orange, is like, you, you guys all got to... Your problem right now, guys, is you're all going after different targets. Yellow is still working on blue. Purple is, is being asked. I mean, we haven't seen purple attack in a long time, so that's fair. 
Purple's running this way. And I think has researched trees in here because blue is running early. And purple in the heat of the moment is coming. We'll try and snipe blue. And then green is here. Green is turned on yellow. Is going to sit underneath the castle. Has yellow realized? Um, there's a lot happening. The, the king is on the way. A crucial mistake from green. Green didn't sit underneath the castle before turning. And the king was able to get away. And meanwhile, I think Blue's King died to the snipe. Very well played from Purple. We were going to see an explosion there. So Blue is done. This all happened at the same time. And now Green has started something here. And so Yellow says, Green tried to snipe me, guys. And says, like, hey, team, come back me up. And Orange behind his back talking to Green like, oh, snap, you tried it already. We should have gone together. So now Orange is going to have a decision to make on who you know, Orange chooses to be loyal to. Red says, where is his king? Now, I don't even know exactly what happened, but there's a signal. Is that a blue signal? Hold on, who signaled that? What color is that? That is a purple signal. Okay. Oh, and that's just purple saying, I will come take teal. Got it. So, you're not going to respond to yellow's cry for help? Purple? All right. Blue says that felt more like a 3v1 than a 4v4. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder if it had something to do with you telling Orange, hey, look at that paladin. Hey, uh, just letting you know, you're not really on my team. Uh, we've got a team of four over here, okay? So if we make a move against you, you know, no hard feelings. Orange then, you know, rallied the troops, told everybody, hey, they've got a team. And, you know, Blue didn't exactly voice the same types of thoughts to the actual team. And then the fighting happened. And, well, that's one of those things that when you look back, I think you'll realize. I think Blue had a lot of trust in Orange. Not to spill the beans there. Yellow's on the way with the Paladins and the Trebs. And obviously, it's going to be a fight between Green and Yellow. I am shocked that Yellow's not like, hey, team, where are you right now? But green might do that soon, because green is, I think, going to possibly lose his fight. And then green might be like, Orange, are you going to help me? And I think Orange will have a tough decision to make. I don't think Orange should necessarily help. I think red is discussing maybe... I'm not sure who... Red might be thinking about helping in the attempt to kill Teal. And Teal says, who do we go for, red? Purple running through. Purple says, this is my sneaking force. I could see Red wanting to team with Teal here. Because that message from Teal right there, if Red saw it, who do we go for? Red hasn't really been sought after a lot. Red hasn't been treated that way that frequently. Anyways, it's going to take Green some time to go down. Yellow's made progress with the traps, but more is going to be needed. Sneaking my force. Open up a wall segment of Teal. This is Purple. Ah, Teal enemied me. F. Yeah, Teal saw this coming a mile away. And Teal has just kind of been sitting here waiting for the enemy to show up. There hasn't been any other plays from Teal. Yes. Anyways, we'll see. I think you know that fight will continue. Still wondering, at one point... At, at what point, sorry, is yellow or green going to be like, Yo, guys, help me here. Orange goes to purple now and says, perp only to you. How do you feel about taking out yellow with me? And purple says, I'm about to snipe yellow. Yellow hasn't been the fanciest with the king techniques. We can talk more about that later. And maybe purple realizes that king's exposed. It looks like purple's about to make the move as yellow's distracted. So yeah, it feels like yellow's a little tunnel vision on the attack. When you're not receiving help from your teammates, they might be thinking about other things. And Teal noticed this and is prepped to defend. I think Teal's going to have enough to defend. The cavalier cav archer combination should be good. Let's do it, says Orange. Yes. And now Orange says, "Okay, Green, I'm going I'm going in." Says this to Green. 
In for who? There's a skirmisher there. Is that a scouting skirm from green? Oh, it's in against yellow. Okay, so this will save green, and yellow will be royally screwed. It probably is to do with yellow's score and how good yellow's played. And yellow says, bruh. Orange does apologize. Says, sorry, you are too strong. Purple now says, what? And now, purple says he noticed, but purple, that's not actually what happened. The king, I think, was going here because yellow wanted a new castle here in the first place. And then also, of course, like, there's another attack happening. Yellow's like, how am I dangerous? I can't even kill green. As red, much to my dismay here, is actually going to turn on teal. I really thought Nocturne, Soul, and the clay could be good together, but red it feels as though he's got a good thing going with some of the other stronger players. So, you know, they're explaining their reasoning, and oh, 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 the clay knew... He couldn't last. So he just sent his king right into Red's castle, which has a king. Red, your bottom score with Teal. You could have teamed up with the clay, but instead you had to pick on him. And you are going to find out the hard way why this was a mistake. Well played from Teal, who felt the writing was on the wall. Red will go alongside him. Maybe as it should have been. At the same time, we've got Yellow running and is trying to make a move, I assume, towards Purple's base. So, Nocturne Soul is dead. The clay is also dead. And yellow is about to die as well, but it's a matter of where. Oh! <laughs> oh, if only the petards would have actually done it. <laughs> okay, yellow's dead. Purple definitely noticed that. The king for purple relocates. And this will lead to a lot of the buildings going down for purple, but the king should survive with the king being over there. Red is a little confused on how it happened. And now there's three players left, guys. And honestly, the plan has kind of worked out for orange and green. Orange says, green, you help me with purple now? Green says, yes. And orange is like, let's go. So now it's everyone up against purple. And purple goes green, then each other. Wait, wait, Orange now goes to purple and says, all right, purple, green. So Orange just continues to play both sides. And Orange basically has been playing everybody since the start. He's been proclaiming, I'm friends with you since the very beginning. And anyways, as we hear the conics thump down Yellow's castle, of course, Yellow is dead, right? And Orange says, let's do it. And purple declares war on green, obviously. Orange has not turned on any of these players yet. Which makes me think there is a sneak attempt happening somewhere. Orange is kind of acting like the fight's happening. The units are attacking some things. Purple says, wrong way with that siege. Okay, I think Purple realizes something's up. And then we also have the attack here. And the king is located in here as well. So, okay. Credit to Nephthys here. It didn't take too long to realize the situation. But may, might not have noticed these rams at the moment. As I say, that comics are coming over now to pick off the rams. The king will survive for a while, but it's two versus one. And I think boyars and halbs and plumes and all these things combined, plus the siege ram, could be tough for purple. Purple's going to have to make a play against two. Purple's trade is actually going this direction as well, and we'll go down to Arge's castle there. So there will be no more trade for purple. This should be the end for purple. And as players are still trying to figure out how they died, <laughs> um, I, I think the game plan diplomatically has worked out really well for Orange. Because Orange was so kind to Blue at the start, Orange got to hear about the other team and make decisions for, you know, how to handle that. Spoke to Green earlier about this possible arrangement, and Green very much was on board. Orange got all the benefit of being allied with kind of everyone in this game, but has also contributed a lot with the fights, we have to say. And now, you know, your trade's not dying. Purple really needs a castle. You need a castle in your own trade. So if someone, if you turn on someone, you're killing their trade. That's not happening. And 
Now purple is going to try and attempt at turning green. Now, green might not have expected to get a tasted victory today. And purple says, do you think you, we can, you can take orange? Together we can smash. And that is a bold statement. I like it. And green might think about this because green was happy to take a little side deal against the earlier team. And now it's down to three. We have <laughs> orange saying green need help, please. And green signals as the army is here, and green is not going to turn on orange. Hmm. Okay, so... You know, uh, oh, this is cool. Shout out to you, Red, for making the towers there in the cliffs. I didn't realize that. I would have rooted for you more. They're making way too much progress here, and I think purple might need to realize the writing is on the wall and try and get the king towards somebody here. Green says, maybe I'll lose. So may it be. It's like, well, so be it, I suppose. If I am to die today, I will die alongside the player that I pledged my allegiance to. Quietly. And Purple says, I'll make you lose. Huh. My king will go for you, says Purple. But Purple's not ready to give up, give it up just yet. So this is a threat. Like, hey, I will explode you with my king if you don't fight me. But I mean, you're pretty well fortified if you're green. I just don't think you should take the deal. Purple says, unless you switch. I mean, it is a threat. That's as big a threat as you could potentially pose here. I think another thing you could say is I'll send all my resources to orange before I do it. I have 20k golds. I can send half to you. If you team with me. Actually, I don't even know. You can't lie because then you have to send it. Yeah, there's no resources to send. But you could... You could lie and say I'll send you 10k gold if you attack Orange here. And signal and then start the war. And then just never send the gold. <laughs> so, purple threatens. And green, not even scared, says I'll count on it. <laughs> just let me... Let me know what time you're coming. I'll be ready. Uh, I mean... Purple held. Crazy army spike. Purple held here. The Hussars are going to clear all of this up. Uh-oh. I still don't think that purple's ready yet to give it up, but I could be wrong. With no trade thing's kind of a problem. The castle here gets denied. And, uh, you know, there's always opportunity. You know, the other thing you could try in purple's position is you could tell orange that green has been talking behind his back or something. Try and tear them apart. The purple's adding trade still. I imagine it's going the other way. Yeah, okay, so there's still trade headed towards somebody's market here. Red's market. It's not bad. And green says, you're pretty strong, man. Is this green getting scared? Or is it just like a, you know, respect type of compliment? I think there might be a little bit of fear with that. But when you're making halves against Hussars, there shouldn't be that much fear. Hmm. G's T90 giving sketchy strats. Those are not sketchy strats. That's a good strat. I wish I could use my own strategies, but everyone always teams up against me. <laughs> they just want to kill me right away. But no, like the strategy that started at the that Orange started with at the start of the game, where you just toggle on everyone and say, I want to be friends only to you. That's the strategy that I've been talking about for a while. I think more people sh will start doing it, and then I think more people are going to start to call people out. If you just say, hey, just to you, want to be friends, and you don't say the color or the name, players will then become very suspicious. Okay, here's the movement from Purple. And Purple probably researched treason. Actually, it doesn't seem like purple research treason. Now, this king's not that strong. There are skirms here. And it's going to be hard to pass through this. It's like the range units are waiting and purple is trying to force it and dies. This is really close. Green is only in a tower. This is really close. Honestly, I'd be more certain if the king was here. A couple tiles to make all the difference. Green realizes because of the animation and the time. 
And of course, purple dying and green's gonna run. So green will be fine. There will be an explosion. Obviously, a lot of units and castles and buildings will go down. I want to know, would that have killed that king though? It would have. It would have. Well played from purple. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> this is so funny to me. So earlier, you know, red was basically very confused on how they died, right? <laughs> and they've been talking in heaven or hell, I guess, about, you know, the whole game. Purple dies. And red immediately approaches them and says, well, 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 purple. <laughs> and purple's like, I never tried to kill you, red. So purple still doesn't know it was teal that did it. That's hilarious. Anyways, green's alive, and I imagine this is going to turn into a fight between orange and between green. And orange has been a mastermind the whole way through. Look, we've got like flag, 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 villagers and castles. These are not kings, but it's hard for the enemy to know that. Just so many fakes. It is kind of telling, though, that the one castle that is actually not just a castle. There's a tower behind it. That one actually is the king. But, I mean, that's, that's a lot of detail to look at when you're in the game. Hmm. So, you know, it, it's come down to two. And Orange had the excellent strategy at the start. Green just kind of went along with the plan, was happy to go with the plan, and certainly benefited from the arrangement that they made. But no one says just because you've started this type of a deal that that means you have to win the game. That's not necessarily how it works. Mm. I feel as though you know green can hold for quite some time. The reds collected. Pretty even for both, actually. And I think Hal Plumed Archer is good against Boyar Ram, where it's not good as if there's Siege on it. The Ram still will take out buildings, though, which will have an effect. Red is chatting away. And is uh you know, they've, they've enjoyed their time here. I'm still curious on when Red, uh, like, realizes it was Teal. I love how Teal hasn't even owned it. Teal's just like, I'm dead, so let me just rest in peace here. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm, I, I get you want to chat and be friends, <laughs> but I'm struggling to know what to talk about right now. <laughs> uh, it's all good. That was... That will not take long. It was an honor, sir, says Green. So Green thinks he's dead? You're not dead. You got tons of resources. You're fine. Well, I don't know. Fine's a different word. These are elite plumes, right? Okay, elite plumes. Pretty much full ups. Siege rams will still take out buildings. Okay, and siege onagers are coming. Yeah, maybe it will, with only a couple castles, be pretty quick here. Hmm. Is Red asking? They've made a friend. They've made friends. This is post-game Diplo. Red is, I think, asking Yellow to play other games and chill. Yellow's like, nah, it's not my type of game. <laughs> It'd be really funny if Red didn't know that Teal killed him. And that if Red was asking Teal and Teal's like, sure. And they play games for a couple days and then this finally hits YouTube. And then Red no longer wants to play games with Teal. That would make me happy. Man, the Siege Rams tank so much. I underestimated them. And the the weakness of Siege, uh, of my sorry, is the lack of their own strong Siege. They do have Siege Ram, but they do not have Siege Onager. And there's just one castle remaining for Green. Unfortunately for you, Green, you can't use your King to detonate somebody right now. Because there's only one person. Obviously, the second the King dies... The game is then over. But this was some textbook diplomacy from Arn. Wasn't the first person to attack. Was quick to find allies very quickly. Um, then had a fallback plan to work against some of the allies that were clearly very strong in purple and then also yellow. It doesn't always pan out when you try and do that. But panned out pretty perfectly here. I don't know if there's any 
other plans that could come to fruition here for green there was a treb here a second ago that's gone there's no movements from green coming through and i think overall i think green will probably have you know respect for orange for fighting together and did say it was an honor here, right? So this is just one last stand here for Gondir. Purple says, I didn't kill you red, by the way, if chat works. You should be able to see everyone's chat once you're dead, I think. I, I don't actually know how it works. I know purple's probably watching the stream here. I guess red isn't watching at all. It's just staying in the game. I do allow people to come back to the stream once they're dead. I obviously can't really enforce, but it's it's like usually people come back at this point. And Red's trying to figure out how that happens. So I guess we'll get to see Red's reaction here. Yellow not too pleased with the fact that Orange is winning the game. Green is production buildings all the way back here, sending Halves and Eagles home, which isn't helping matters. But Green's still holding because of the resource bank. Eagles come in to snipe the siege. Still... Plenty of archers out, and Green's still alive. Red said he doesn't do Facebook. Yeah, yeah, But it's weird to not watch, you know? Like, a lot of people don't have an account if they don't want to chat. But I guess, like, because you don't need to have an account to watch. So it could be a lot of people just pay attention to the Discord when it's happening and don't really interact with the other aspects of it, but... Green's held. Is there a chance for Green if Green gets Trebs? Green with 160 army right now. And what's the gold count for yellow? Or for orange? Orange is down to just 175 gold. Every unit we've seen from March in this game has been a gold unit. So champions, boyars, and siege. Not seeing stables. So, well, there's a couple stables. But no real long-term plan for Hussar. How do you join community games? I, uh, we use the Discord. If you're here when we're setting one up, I explained the whole process right before. There's also a video called How to Join Community Games, which explains the process. But... Oh, Red, I'm listening to the stream. T90 said it was Teal who somehow managed to kill you. Red's like, what? And Yellow says, King Explosion, I think. Keep in mind, we're like five minutes behind live time. So it might even be more than that. Because, like, our host just started the game before without telling me. Like, no one said, hey, we start. And then I was like, hey, you guys good to go? What's the status? And he's like, oh, yeah, we're in the game. So they might be pretty far behind. Now, the King Boom mod, the maps, all that stuff is just transferred directly from the host over to the players. So what you need to do is get selected by my bot. But in order to do that, you just have to, you know, be here. And obviously get very lucky because a lot of people try and enter, so... I'm sorry for starting too early. No, no, no. It's not a big deal. <laughs> it's way better than, you know, so many other things that could happen. <laughs> it was just kind of funny. I don't know how, like, behind the times I am. But yeah, I mean, Teal, I think, did the right thing. I mean, Teal had a pretty large army. So I thought Teal was going to fight back against Red. But Teal basically determined, I have no help now. So I'm just going to go kill Red with me. And I think Red just didn't expect it at all. Still feels like there is an opportunity for green. As long as green's able to get this, the trebs like, moving forward. How many gold units do we have? Orange goes in there to snipe the trebs as the gate is being repaired. But eventually stone will run dry, but the trebs get taken out. Let me see. Okay, gold workers, I'm just going to assume is trade. There's 24 for green and there's 19 for orange. They both have tons of food. There's actual working farmers though for orange. Wood is actually a concern for green, especially when halves and archers cost wood and siege. But, I mean, that's a pretty ridiculous comp right now. This is just a grind of a game. If either player could maybe get into the other's trade route, like this Boyar has been here, slowly attacking trade, is slightly slower than a trade cart. So... <laughs> <laughs> this looks kind of funny. Run, little dude! <laughs> Run! You could you could tell that he's being chased. He's aware. He might not have a rear view mirror, but he can sense it. Go! 
go. You can do it. Let's see. Can he make it the whole way? Oh, no. This random village is in the way. Run! This is content right here. I know people want me to look elsewhere for some reason. This is this is really the best content we could have. Run! Go! You're he's already taking damage, guys. <laughs> oh wait, wait! He oh he's making it! Oh, the boyar's losing sight of him. Go! Eventually, the boyar will stop attacking. Go, 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 go. This is going to get really awkward because he's going to turn around soon. Because he's not just running for his life. He's running to complete the job. Oh, we made it. Let's go. Wait. What happens when he goes back the other way? <gasps> I'm so scared for him. Wait, hold on. Oh, the Boyar's on another one now. Oh, he's safe. But this will apparently just continue forever. Right? Look, there's the other guy. See ya! Not my problem anymore! <laughs> this just continues forever. And I kind of want to follow this one too, but I probably shouldn't. Anyways, the whole sequence is kind of fun. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, there's a random blue monk here healing up Green's units, which is pretty cool. And we have a build up from R and she's looking to attack. Hold on, where's the Boyar? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. I want to know if this trade cart will survive. Oh, God, never try and escape from a Boyar during rush hour. What is that blue trade cart doing? You're being such a jerk. Don't cut him off. Ah. Oh. Dang. There's some drivers, man, I'll tell you. No respect on the roads these days. Okay, well... Oh, jeez, big shots. Sea Johnagers were the problem before. Sea Johnagers are going to be the problem again. Orange also did take out Green's base here. The green needs houses. And needs defense for the siege. And I think it still does feel like just a matter of time. I mean, that Boyar is going to eventually kill all the trade. It's just going to take a while. Where is it? Where is it now? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Yep, so it's going to eventually kill all the trade. It is attacking trade cards from players who are already dead. That's not too bad. Castle on the way up here from Arn. Bit of a weird castle to place. Um, And could have probably completed it had the villagers not been clicked away. But realizes and completes the castle. And that will kill quite a few units here. So Green needs to maybe pack up the trebs and go for that. Green did already take out this castle, though, from Orange. Just wondering if Orange is going to have Trebs together with the push to go for the kill. But Green's army count isn't what it used to be. And Green doesn't have much eco, so I think Green's going to have to call it quits soon. I'm just imagining Green and Orange watching the stream back like, Oh yeah, T90 totally saw my epic play. Hey, listen. The epic play was when Orange killed the trade card. Okay, well, you see Johnager's unprotected. No champions in front. Eagles will find the kills. This is what we missed. We missed Orange just not paying attention to a siege. And now back to the Boyar. How's the Boyar doing? Oh, boy, it's round two. Okay, I'm really curious, guys. I feel like there's more congestion now, right? Time has passed. People are driving home from work. I feel as though this trade card's not going to survive. This feels like a really bad way to conclude what was a really solid game, but there's not a lot of progress from Green. I think Green is near death, and Green doesn't want to accept it. And Orange slowly moving in with Rams. Boyar slowly gaining on Trade Cart. <gasps> oh, he did a little little U-turn. Green says, I'll surrender. No, 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 don't surrender yet. We got to see if the Trade Cart survives. We got to see if the Trade Cart survives. Green says, take my king. But the Trade Cart... It's making its move. There's the king, and yeah, this is where green just gives it up. And orange says, I will sacrifice him with honor. Okay, slowly ramming someone to death with siege rams is not honorable. That is like the slowest possible death. It's one damage. A I think it's one damage a hit. Also, I didn't realize the king's healed. Did you guys know that? I feel like maybe even I knew that. Maybe it was the monk. I don't know. It's going down. 
The king was not ready to die. How'd the trade card do? Trade card actually went down! Well, that's probably why green resigned. A good game, and a game that Orange planned from the very start, apparently. Um, I am going to be teamed with everybody. And that's how it worked. Um, you know, I think... I, I kind of said it all already, but... Like, Orange did a great job. Helped to the team. Right? Played for the original team. Also had a backup plan in green, which obviously ended up working out. And then was kind enough to receive information from the other side as well. And everything went according to plan. That's what I will potentially title this later. Probably going to need a better title than that. But everything went according to the plan here for sure. Uh, Purple was expecting Orange to be ready to fight alongside him. Didn't happen. Uh, Yellow was expecting Orange to continue to back him as a teammate. Didn't happen. Anytime there was a threat, the threat got killed until it turned down to the, the final two. Uh, but but really good overall play. I really liked some of the other moments as well, right? Like Gray, I know it wasn't the prettiest game because they just got rolled super hard, but Gray realized this is Exploding Kings. I'm going to die. Even though it's my first community game, I'm going to try and get my king to them. Teal was like, this is not good for me. I really wanted to play more than this, but Red's going to attack me. Fine. I'm going to kill Red, and Red's going to be confused about it for the next 20 minutes. So... Players, they, they played the game mode really well in this one, which I appreciate. Also had some really cool units there. But yeah, Debris experienced. And 1,400 kills, about 950 deaths. Uh, Rez collected also the highest in the game. Of course, played the game a lot longer, but still did a really good job there. So did Green, in all honesty. And um, I just knew Green was going to lose hope once the trade cards got killed by the Boyar. To anyone watching this later that was maybe upset that I was watching the Boyar chase the trade cart. I apologize. I will not make that comment, however, um, or frequent. But if you're on the other side of it and you're like, T90, give me more Boyar versus trade cart action, then I will be very split on what to do and may dedicate a whole video to just watching trade carts run away from Boyars. Whatever the people want, I supply it. By the way, uh, Orange only had one kill that game. Just one kill. It was the final kill. Contributed a lot to the game, but was kind of the puppet master there for a bit.